Foodies Prayer Book, a collection of meditations for long midnights and alternate routes by Janelle Dill. Circle C 2024, No Shrinking Violets, All Rights Reserved. Author's Note. Spoonie, noun, a term coined in 2015 to signify chronic illness. Spoons signify the amount of energy spent doing daily tasks. In the photo, I look fine. You wouldn't know it, but I've gone through several battles. In 2003, my world shifted when I met epilepsy. Between absence seizures, complex partials, and one medication that almost took my vision, I am thankful to be here. 2010 to 2015 was the most difficult season of my life. I was at risk for sudden, unexplained death from epilepsy, SUDEP for short. My medication left me short of breath. I have a brain fog of years where details are a blur. I know somewhere deep in the recesses of my mind, memories are hidden. Maybe they aren't essential, but I am curious to know what lies in my hippocampus. Until then, it remains a veiled mystery. While I am eight years seizure-free, I still struggle with migraines and chronic vertigo. I have bad days when I hurt so bad I don't want to do anything but rest. I created this book for my fellow Spoonies, Sporkies, and Sporkies alike. May it encourage you as you go through your days. For alternate routes, Isaiah 43, 18-19. Do not remember the past events and pay no attention to things of old. Look, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Psalm 16, 11. You reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy. In your right hand are eternal pleasures. I have a love-loathing relationship with Google Maps. Sometimes she helps me get to the correct destination. Other times she sends me on an alternate route full of bumps, rough roads, and steep inclines. I confess it tries my patience. Having a chronic illness, life is full of recalculations. For instance, when you hope to attend a party, you must make room for chronic illness. I think it's a commercial for Crohn's disease. The woman plans to attend a party, but her gut has new ideas. Nope, you'll be busy tonight, she indicates the bathroom. The woman has to cancel her plans. Her gut follows her everywhere, riding a bike, going to the store, and getting her hair cut. Whoever created this commercial captures chronic illness perfectly. Canceled plans, sick days, and times you wonder if you're on the right track. While your friends are out doing normal activities, your body declares war. Friend, you are not alone. Social media creates an ideal image of hitting milestones, success at work, finding a house of your own, and being able to do it alone. Self-sufficiency is a mirage. When curveballs come our way, it's impossible to be self-sufficient. It melts like snow in the harsh flames of suffering. We can choose to be complacent, complain, or confess our needs to God who sees us. Alternate routes are rough to navigate. If you feel as if the road is too much to tackle, don't go it alone. Find a friend to sit alongside you. Talk to a therapist or counselor. Find a person you can trust to do life with you. God never intended us for self-sufficiency. Prayer. Lord, it's not easy walking on an alternate path. Sometimes it seems I fall behind in life goals. Remind me to not focus on others' pathways, but to refine my vision to yours. Amen. The Empty Tool Drawer Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He renews my life. He leads me on the right path for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. Chronic illness is a struggle. Sometimes I have enough energy to get through the day. On other days, I lack of stamina to complete my task. The simple act of getting out of bed and going for breakfast seems impossible. My energy is zapped. I want to crawl back into bed and sleep all day. However, I am unable to do so. If I sleep all day, I have what's called revenge sleep procrastination. 
Look it up on Google. For 20 years, I've journeyed with chronic illness. While lacking energy sucks, it doesn't have to be a drag. You can utilize the time to reconnect and slow down. One thing I found helpful during the pain is reciting the same verse over and over. You can choose a verse from the Bible and read it until you know it by heart. If you are terrible at remembering, get an audio version of the Bible and play it softly in the background. It is a good way to help your body and your mind unwind. Prayer Lord, the tool drawer is empty. I lack the tools to press on through the day. Arm me with the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 22-23, the tools to help me walk through my days. When patience seems far and few between, and a love to a distant dream, remind me of the tools you offer me. Amen. Spoon shortage. Psalm 119, 26. I am weary from my grief. Strengthen me through your word. 2010 was a difficult season. I lost my job and hoped to embark on my graduate degree in library science. One phone call changed everything. I remember it clearly. I hoped to attend Drexel University in Philly. I passed the test for a job at a nearby library for an internship. I didn't have anywhere to live, but I had dreams of being a librarian. I am a fan of the show Low Librarians and wanted to change the world with my love of books. If you have never seen the show, a group of superheroes go out to save and sacred relics of library books from being used as weapons to destroy the world. The hospital phoned me. The nurse asked me. Asked for me. I replied, yes, this is Janelle. Who is this? Woman, this is Somerset Hospital. We have the results from your blood work. Your doctor wants to send you to an oncologist. She is concerned about the results. I felt the bottom drop from out of my stomach. In a moment, all the dreams of attending Drexel University to become a librarian went down the tube. My focus shifted from studies to seeking medical treatment. I remember my fingers dialing the number for the oncologist. I had an appointment coming up in December. The wait felt like an eternity. When the appointment arrived, I heard Simply Red singing, holding back the years. The chorus stood out. I keep holding on. I keep holding on. I keep holding on. I keep holding on. I keep holding on so tight. When the nurse called my name, I sat in the icy room, praying and hoping for the best. The doctor put me at ease, thankfully. He asked me what went on during the time of my blood work. I had no idea. He read the results and explained what my body goes that my body goes through cycles when it runs out of energy and crashes. He used a big term for it. I can't recall it for the life of me. This was my first introduction to the world of chronic illness. He wanted to monitor my progress, and if I crashed anymore, I was a candidate for a blood bone marrow transplant. Confusion stood out on my face. I had to return in February if my blood work showed more problems. While I can't explain my body's quirks, I know my body is weak. You might have a shattered dream of housing, college, a job, a relationship, or something as simple as a day out with friends. It is easy to despair and feel hopeless. Despair creeps in when you least expect it. It is essential to remember who you are never alone. There are plenty of folks like me out there who get it. Plug into communities of people who are there for you. In 2013, I made my first move into joining a disabled community. I will talk about them later. Prayer. In my weary state, lead me in the way of rest. May this time of rest bring rejuvenation and peace. Amen. Stick a fork in me. Isaiah 40, 28-31 Do you not know? Have you not heard? Yahweh is the everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. He never grows faint or weary. There is no limit to his understanding. He gives strength to the weary and strengthens the powerless. Youths may faint and grow weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who trust in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. From 2010 to 2015, I experienced medical medication burnout. Over five years, I tried about 25 different medications to treat my chronic migraines. It starts as an aura of blue, purple, or yellow light. Once in a while, it is green. Then the migraine spreads from the occipital lobe to the rest of my head. It is an ice pick chiseling into my skull. I have to lie down in a quiet place, put ice over my left eye, and rest. I have taken acetaminophen to help treat the symptoms, but it is ineffective. I can't remember every medication I tried, but most failed. 
I reached a point in 2015 where I had enough. I got tired of playing guinea pig. I didn't want to experiment with prescriptions anymore. Too many took a toll on my body. I prayed for relief. I was done. The worst part of my treatment? Having a doctor who didn't understand. He thought he knew everything about my condition. I felt ignored and unheard. It took me six more years to find a new neurologist. Friend, you might be at your limit. You might feel as if someone stole your forks and you are done. It might seem there's no way out and being in this season will last an eternity. I have good news. It won't last. While I can't tell you when you will come out the other side, hold on to the hope there is someone who sees and hears you. It might be a friend, someone in your community, or a family member. God does not forget to see or hear you. Prayer. My eyes are weary and my heart is sore, Lord. Let my soul be strengthened in your word. May your word soothe my aching heart. Amen. Side Effects James 1, 2-4 Consider it all joy, brethren, when you receive various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. But endurance must do its complete work, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Reading the above verse, you might say, How can I consider it joy when my life is a train wreck right now? Good question. It's easy to misinterpret the words of James to mean, suck it up and be happy no matter what circumstances are in your life. Giving anyone such words is not only wrong, but dangerous. It takes scripture out of context, professing a healthy and wealthy lifestyle. God never once promised us such a life. John 16.33 puts things into a better perspective. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have trials in this world. But be courageous, I have overcome the world. Nowhere does Jesus mention a life of leisure. He promises us problems, but himself is the solution to everything bothering us. It doesn't mean all of our problems on earth are going to be resolved in our lifetime. Some may remain unsolved. When James mentions consider it all joy, he wants us to take it as taxes. When you do your taxes, you have various columns to sort out various items. If you are an artist, you have to sort out the expenses for travel, items for your work, commissions, and taxable income. Every item gets a designated slot. During my brain fog years, I experienced a ton of side effects. Dizziness, weight loss, vision change, metallic taste in the mouth, allergic reactions to various foods, nausea, memory loss, horrid migraines, and the worst of the bunch, nocturnal seizures. I didn't think of it as joy. I had to change my perspective. I put the things I was joyful for at the time. Joyful I was still alive. Joyful I had breath in my lungs. Joyful to have people in my life who care, and ultimately, God. I lost plenty, but gained more. What are you thankful for today? Write down the things you are grateful for and enjoy the moment. Prayer. Suffering is a part of life, Lord. You never promised us a world of health and wealth. May this day be one to reach out and see the glimmers of gold in the gutters. You transform beauty out of the ashes. You transform the ugliness of life into goodness so others may see and know you. And yet you, Yahweh, are there. Make me more aware today. Amen. It's complicated. Relationships with a chronic illness. 2 Corinthians 12, 8 through 10. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Twenty years ago, epilepsy entered my life. It's strange, though. I enjoyed doing musical theater. Now, the chapter is closed. Starting over is difficult. Once I learned about epilepsy, the question became, now what? After college, finding work became a battle. I tried different jobs from teaching kids to working at a technical school. All jobs went awry. Once I started taking new medications, maintaining my health took over. In 2013, three years after I lost my previous job at a technical school, 
I discovered the Anita Kaufman Foundation, a nonprofit organization that helps individuals with epilepsy. They had a program called Ambassadors of Purple. I wanted to know more about it. After talking to the founder of the organization, I joined and became an Ambassador of Purple. Since then, I have dedicated myself to spreading epilepsy awareness. By 2015, I pursued my dream as a writer. I wrote my first book, The Belonging Place. I am eight years seizure free. However, I am not cured. I don't always enjoy having epilepsy, chronic migraines, or vertigo. I have rough days when I want to feel better. However, I can't return to my pre-disabled life. You might empathize. You might ask yourself, where do I go from here? Do I have any value? Friend, you matter, and if you are unable to work at this point, never let it define your worth. Our skills are not equal to our value. Our culture makes success about our amount of skills and what we earn. In God's eyes, being in the family is worth more than any amount of success. Success is being in God. Prayer. God, there are days I dislike my disability more than others. Sometimes I don't want to have my thorn in the flesh, as Paul writes to the Corinthians. However, you told Moses long ago in Exodus, Who made your mouth? Who am I to question whether or not you let, my dis let disability into my life? While I may not understand why or how it is in my life, help me to take into account your power, which is greater than my weaknesses. Amen. Misunderstandings and Phobias 1 John 4.18 There is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears has not reached perfection in love. While the way attending college, I experienced a major adjustment. Aside from taking new medications, I had to reset my mind to unknown surroundings. The hardest thing for me was experiencing a new world of ableism. I had a professor who didn't like me because I had epilepsy. I found out that his son's fiance at the time, they married a year later, had epilepsy. His son told me his father feared their child might have epilepsy like her. No wonder the professor acted bizarrely. Like a starling, he loved hurting anyone who seemed vulnerable. While he enjoyed tearing folks like myself down, I refused to give in to his tirades mired in fear. It took me plenty of time to rebuild my battered body and weary spirit. Friend, fear likes to prey on vulnerability. Whether you are in a new situation or you encounter a difficult person who makes it impossible for you to love or listen to you, fear is a one-way alley that leads to destruction. Love is the pathway that leads to hope. You may not be loved in return, and the person may only give out toxic comments and or show you nothing but disrespect or twist your actions. I want to remind you it is not your fault. The person doesn't see the hurt in them. And maybe, on the other hand, you are the one doing the hurting and need to feel the fear in your heart. Maybe you have lived in fear for a long time for some reason or other. The question is, what will you do with the fear you feel? Will you be bitter or better through it? Prayer. God, it hurts being misunderstood. Fear likes to take hold of my heart and make me feel powerless. Help me shatter the stigmas of not being able to do anything. In you, we can do everything. Your love transforms hearts and minds. While I can't fix everyone, I can grow to love as you first loved us. Amen. When you miss your friends and all the little things. Nahum 1.7 The Lord is good, a stronghold in a day of distress. He cares for those who take refuge in Him. I've always been a loner, especially through my school years. I made friends in school, but college altered everything. Living away from home brought out some of my longest friendships. Once college ended, I longed to be anywhere but at home. I wanted to live with friends, but those opportunities fell by the wayside. Life moved on, and I fell further behind. How could I start over and make new friends in my area? I tried finding new hobbies and places to go, but my efforts fell flat. I still fail. I don't have a lot of new friends in person. More of mine are online and in support groups. While I can't see many of my friends in person, writing notes and sending cards is a way I connect with people. Maybe you find yourself in a lonely season. Another lonely season. You don't know if there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I assure you, though it seems to go forever, there is hope. You have to look for the glimmers of gold in the sand traps of life. Prayer Friendship seems impossible at my age. As I grow older, making friends gets more difficult. Sometimes it's easier to live in a land of isolation. 
Help me, Lord, to walk through the seasons of loneliness. Remind me I am never alone, for you are with me now and always. Amen. Normal is overrated. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Our culture tends to celebrate ability. Whether someone wins an award or gets a promotion, the idea of success and being somebody hangs heavily from birth. Being disabled, I have experienced both worlds of being gifted and a nobody. As a kid, I tested as gifted. By the time I reached high school, I fell back into normal, missing out on the gifted homeroom by two points. After my diagnosis, I became a nobody. In college, I saw a psychiatrist and discovered I was gifted after all. My giftedness never left. It was in the wings waiting to be rediscovered. If you are talented in some area, people expect you to perform all the time. When you are disabled and can't do certain tasks, you are considered a nobody. Whether you, your disability is hidden or visible, you can feel the strain of being somebody. Thriving in an environment can take its toll. Expecting disabled folks to fit into such a mold of ability or somebodiness is impossible. You burn out. I almost did five years ago as an advocate. It took me time to rest and rejuvenate. God never called us to grind ourselves into oblivion, but to be his beloved children, uniquely, beautifully made. The best part, we don't have to be somebody. We don't have to be normal. We can come just as we are, gifted or not. Prayer. I struggle to live against the grain of normal. The ideas and social memes of normal muddle my thoughts. Renew my mind in your promises, which are faithful and true. Amen. The Long Midnight. Psalm 62, 2, NIV. From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. 2015 was an interesting year for me. I went to my neurologist for my six-month checkup. She was not satisfied with my results. I told her about the trouble I had going to sleep. Concerned, she sent me to an epileptologist in Pittsburgh. An epileptologist specializes in epilepsy and goes for five additional years of training compared to a neurologist. My epileptologist recommended I get a VEEG done to see what was going on in my head. In April, I went to Allegheny General Hospital for my testing. The hardest part for me was reducing my seizure medication while hooked to the monitor. Every time I had to use the bathroom, I had to unplug myself from the computer. It was like living in the 90s with dial-up. I also had itchy electrodes attached to various parts of my head and a 20-pound box around my neck to record the results. Talk about difficulty sleeping! I could relate to people in rehab. I was on the same medication for 12 years, and now the doctor wanted to reduce it. I got chilled, coughed, and felt dizzy. I hit the buzzer a few times during night and waited for the results. My epileptologist told me I was on too high a dose for my body. It caused me psychogenic seizures. Translation, I had seizures induced by pain, heat, cold, and various aspects affecting my health. By May, I was decreasing my medication a bit at a time. It was the hardest summer ever. Contacting people during the season felt strenuous. I prayed often during the night to sleep well when I felt restless. The above verse was one of those prayers. Contacting friends at weird hours in the night doesn't guarantee an immediate response. Sometimes our friends get busy, are tired, or simply forget. God is perfect and never forgets his children. Ever. He hears us at all hours of the day, anytime, anywhere. He is never tired, busy, or neglectful. I love the fact that he writes us on the palms of his hands. Psalm Isaiah 49, 16. There are plenty more of his promises in the Bible, over 7,000 of them. If you find yourself in a long midnight, God is always there to listen. Prayer. No matter the hour, the minute, or second, I can call on you. I can draw near to you when I am experiencing a long midnight. When I cannot sleep... Help me find rest in your word. Ease my anxious heart. Amen. Time changes. When did I get so old? Ecclesiastes 3.1 
To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. The waiting is the hardest part. Every day means one more yard. You take it by faith. You take it to the heart. The waiting is the hardest part. The waiting is the hardest part. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. During my last semester of college in Pittsburgh, I had to take a humanities class alongside a political science class. Somehow, the pre in previous semesters, the humanities class was omitted from my schedule. How could it happen? I didn't understand. I was graduating in months and needed both courses. If not, I'd have to take the political science class over the summer. Again. Here's the kicker. The humanities course was for freshmen and sophomore students. I stood out as the oldest student in the class. The coursework was too easy for me. I was so bored, sometimes I did my other homework in class. I kept it hidden in my humanities book so that the professor wouldn't notice. I required more focus on my major in English literature, not sitting in class amongst younger students. However, I made new friends and graduated in 2008. You might find yourself waiting for the next stage, waiting while younger people pass you by and older ones go forward. It is easy to question if you are past your prime. Keep this in mind. You are never too old for a career change. Also, you are never too late. God's timing is the best. Julia Child studied at the Cordon Bleu in her 40s. Grandma Moses took up painting at 100. Dick Van Dyke started dancing at 30. You are never too late to fulfill a dream. Prayer. God, I feel so old today. Looking at the younger generations, I feel so far behind. I wonder if I missed my time. You tell me I am not missed my hour, but all things come in your designated time. Help me to wait well in this season. Amen. Celebrating good days, moments, and milliseconds. 1 Corinthians 15.57 Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. I decided to create the Brand Adversary sticker to celebrate being seizure-free. In May, it will be exactly nine years since I had a seizure. Sometimes I had second thoughts, wondering if it were true. Looking back, I realized every step was necessary to reach here. I am grateful for every person, especially God, who makes all things possible. Wherever you are on your journey, celebrate the hopeful, the good moments. Be grateful for those who are with you in those difficult seasons. Prayer. Thank you, God, for the gift of good moments. I give you praise for this moment of joy. May my heart never forget what you have done in this moment. Help me not to get caught up in the desire for perfection, but be content in you. Amen. Staying hopeful in a sea of discouragement. Habakkuk 3, 17 through 19, NIV. Though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no fruit, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and enables me to tread on the heights. I hit the bottom in 2012. It was tough not having a job and going through a rough patch. Not attending grad school and having various opportunities fall through, I needed some cheer. Enter Elliot Tucker, E.T., during the summer. He emerged from the brush pile near the garage, yowling about his presence. He caught my dad's legs and claimed him. It was so cute. He became my kitty over the summer. As he grew, I found humor, friendship, and love getting to know a dear furry friend. Since his death, I cherished the time with him. God brought him into my life for a season. In our seasons of discouragement, we can be grateful for those who walk alongside us. When we hit the bottom, we can cry out to God to encourage our hearts, strengthen us, and give us hope. Though we grieve, there is room for joy to coexist alongside us. Prayer. It is a struggle to be hopeful. Sometimes gloom and despair seem easier. I pray not to become complacent in the face of adversity, but lift my eyes to yours, Lord. Amen. End note. I always wanted to create a prayer book full of my favorite verses and prayers I pray during various phases of my life. As I transition to another season, I will continue growing and discovering a new pocket, new pocket squares to put into my crazy quilt. Thanks to my blessed family and heart friends, Mom, Dad, Aaron, Adam, Hummingbird, Jordan, Janelle, Sarah, Michael, Kavina, Jess, Barbie, Kevin, Richie, Pete, Hope, Benjamin, Megan, Megan, Stephen, Grace, 
Christian, Aaron K., Misty, and various others for being in my community, whom I have encountered over the years. Thank you so much for contributing to this book. Whether you realize it or not, you are all part of the quilt. Special thanks to my late Grammy P., who taught me so much in her work and her love of the Lord. You are dearly missed. Thank you, E.P., for your companionship and love. I miss you, buddy. This book is dedicated wholly to Yahweh, the Lord who sees me. Thank you for listening to Spoonie's Prayer Book by Janelle Dill. This book is available on Lulu. You can buy a copy at www.lulu.com. Also, check out the author's work on her Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash purplelology. Or you can visit her homepage, www.purplelicious.net. Or support her on her Ko-fi page, www.ko-fi.com slash purplelicious. Thank you for listening.